great. I feel like it's been forever since I've made a video. Today we're going to be talking about simple probability, and that is section 9-1 in your book, and your secret word today is tattoo. Probability is just the chance something will happen, and I hope you're taking notes in your notebook or a foldable. If you need to come get some paper, let's do that, but I don't want you to just take notes on that formula sheet. Do not take notes on the formula sheet. So probability is the chance something will happen. The chance an event will happen. And there are, there's kind of like a little scale we have to look at. So I would like you to sketch this in your notes and just sketch a line that goes across and we're going to and uh, probability can be shown in percents so we're going to put zero percent here on this end to 100 percent on the right side so from zero to 100 percent let me make that a little better and right in the middle is 50 percent so we'll put that there and 25% will go right here, and 75%. And we've got some words that go with each of these. If there is a 0% chance of something happening, we say it's impossible. It's not going to happen. If I have only blue socks in my drawer, the chance of me pulling out a black sock is impossible. It will not happen. And then 100% is certain. If I have only blue socks in my drawer, the probability I will pull out a blue sock is certain. There's nothing else for me to choose but blue. I'm going to make a better 25 here. 25%? That is, it could happen, but we say it's unlikely. It probably won't. The chances of you having no AM for a week are unlikely. There's a chance, but it's pretty, um, pretty slim. Slim or unlikely. But 75%, we say that that is likely. It's likely. There's a 75% chance that you will have AM every week. And then 50%, we say it's equally likely or unlikely. Equally likely or unlikely. 50-50 chance. We'll talk about this in a few minutes. Flipping a coin is it's, you're e as equally likely to get heads as you are tails. So um, now there's other percents, obviously. Anything close to 25% we'd say is unlikely. Anything close to 50% we'd say is equally likely or unlikely. Something that's pretty close to 75% we would say is likely. Good chance of it happening. If there's a 75% chance it's going to rain, it's probably going to rain. Now, there's still that chance it won't, but it's pretty darn sure. Okay, speaking of flipping a coin, I have a coin um, right here. This is kind of cool. They let me flip that. And when I flip a coin, the probability of getting heads, I want to talk about that. Here's how I would write that. P and then an H for heads. The, and I read that, the probability of heads. Now, when I look at a coin, there's two sides. There's the head side and there's the tail side. So there's two sides. One of them is heads. So the probability of getting heads is one out of two. So we write that as one half. So we say the probability of heads is one half. So let's just flip the coin. I'm going to flip it. Oh, I got tails. Let's do it again. Tails again. Heads. Heads. Tails. Okay, so that's how we flip a coin in here. We're going to come back and do a few things with that in a few minutes. Um, when we are writing probabilities, you, we usually write them as a fraction. Sometimes we can write them as a percent. But if we write them as a fraction, we always reduce or simplify. We always simplify probabilities. For example, let's say that I have a spinner here. So I'm going to get a circle and draw a spinner. And we'll say, we'll divide it up into eight parts. And the 
this isn't going to be perfect, but we're going to pretend that these are all the same length. Okay, so there's my spinner. And I've got a, my little arrow that's going to spin. And I have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 on my spinner. And I want to know, what is the probability of spinning an 8? Well, let's look. There are eight different sections. One of them is an eight. So one out of eight, I write that one eight. What is the probability that when I spin, I will get an even number? Well, let's look here. I have, my even numbers are two, four, six, and eight. That's four of them out of eight, but I can't leave that four eights. I have to reduce that to one half. What is my probability of getting a number that is less than 4? Well, how many numbers are less than 4? 2, 3, 2, and 1. Three numbers, so that's 3 out of 8. And your secret problem is, what is the probability of getting an odd number? Um, some of you have not been getting the secret problem, so please make sure that you do on this one. A couple others I want to talk about. What is the probability that when I spin, I'll get a letter? Well, there are no letters, so my probability is zero. What is my probability that when I spin, I will get a number? Well, they're all numbers, so it's 8 out of 8, which I reduce to 1. It, so the probability of getting a letter is impossible. The probability of getting a number is 1. Okay, we're going to use this spinner again, or excuse me, the flip coin flipper. I'm going to bring, bring it down here where we've got some, some room. There we go. Okay, I want to talk about uh, two more words. And one of the words is, um, this is kind of a big word, theoretical probability. I'm going to abbreviate probability because we've already got a long word here. And then my other word is experimental. Okay, and theoretical probability, that's just what I think is going to happen. I kind of make a prediction. What we think will happen. And then experimental is when I do the experiment, and it's what does happen. And sometimes those are the same, and sometimes they're different. <coughs> so I'm going to look up here at flipping this coin. And first of all, I want to know what is the probability of getting tails? Well, two sides, there's a heads and a tails, so my probability of getting tails is one half. So let's think about, what if I flipped it ten times? How many times would you think I'd get heads, and how many times would you think I'd get tails? Well, if it's half, you would think the theoretical probability is I would get five heads and five tails. Well, I right now would like to um, flip this coin ten times and see how that compares. So let's flip it, um, and let's go ahead, and I'm going to keep track. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put a head here and a tail here. And we think that we should get five and five, but let's see what we do. One, two, three, four, mm, five. Six, seven, eight. Goodness, that's not what we thought would happen at all, is it? Nine. Do you think I'm going to get all ten hits? I don't know. Let's try it one more. Ten. I did. I got all ten hits. 
So that's not at all. That our experimental prob prob probability was way different than our theoretical. And we're going to do a, a three different activities in class. This is my theoretical. I thought I would get five heads. But when I experimented, I actually got ten. So my experimental was greater than or bigger than or more than my theoretical. So that's what I want to ask. That's another secret question. Which was more? Theoretical or experimental? Which was more? And um, that's all I have for you today. So we will talk to you in class. Bye-bye.